And as you can see at the moment we have one step. Let's let's uh, crank the power up. Set this to maybe 40. Now you're thinking, well now, what's going on here? Well, what's going on is actually this first shape is morphing into the um, second one. If I press A, ah, this is one thing I should have mentioned earlier. If you press A, you can select just individual points of a shape in case you want to um, change the kind of corners around and stuff. And I think as I stretch this out, you're starting to get a better idea of what this does. And um, if I change, the best thing about this is, is if I change this um, top shape to the same gradient, you'll see what's going on. Um, if I made, I'm determined to show you this. Uh, there's a very popular effect which has been tutorialized millions of times, so I'm not going to cover it in any great detail. I'm going to make a straight line. I just want the stroke, so there we go. And I'm going to make another. Oh, we're still on the same path, sorry. I'll select V and then click off and then press P again for my pen tool. And I'm going to make another line. And what we're going to do is select these two lines and go to Object, Blend, Make. And once again, we have horrible settings. We go to back and select Blend Options, Specified, specified Steps. Uh, fill this up to maybe 15. And we have... 15 probably wasn't enough for what I'm trying to show you. Let's try 50. And you get this really cool effect, which can be seen in graphic work from everywhere. If you cross things over, things start to get hectic and pretty awesome. And you know, this is one to play around with. You can uh, create some really interesting abstract shapes. Um, moving on, as we are rapidly running out of time, these kind of tutorials eat up my life. Uh, right, we have down here the bucket tool. Okay, let's make uh, four shapes. What we're going to do is select them all. And if we select our live bucket tool, and then you're going to hover over and you're going to see click to make a live paint group. And then it's like being back at school. Um, I'm just going to select an orange. You can uh, paint in the areas. <laughs> Great stuff. Hours of fun here. Possibly minutes, depending on what you like to do with your time. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty self explanatory. Uh, come down to the eraser tool. And the eraser tool works much in the way of um, you would expect from an eraser tool. I'm going to hit the open bracket here. If I run through this, which is pretty cool, as you can see it's created a new path here. New points from where it erased and that can be useful for um, just erasing parts of uh, stuff that you don't use. Now I'm going to um, rapidly, rapidly explain the pathfinder because one of the most common things you will want to do is maybe cut holes in stuff and there is probably one of the most useful things on this program is the pathfinder now say for example I want to cut a hole in this blue circle and what I'm going to show you is uh, if you hold command press back bracket you can move stuff forward you can also um, pretty sure the command is somewhere in uh, I think arrange and you can uh, send backward course the blue circle is already there so that was stupid um, send forward bring forward and then we've brought it kind of in front because um, although we have layers just like um, Photoshop the layers can kind of have multiple elements on them so that's kind of not to get confused so although we have a layer we kind of have a layer within a layer here so we have this above and if I bring it below once again so just so you understand that, a useful thing to know is if I make a new layer, say you want to move something to the layer above, select what you want to move, grab this little coloured cube and drag it up here. And now we have a separate layer for um, our circle and our square, so that's quite useful. Okay, so I'm going to select both of these and go to um, Object, 
compound path make and we now this is great because we have now made a kind of hole using our first shape in our second shape and you know if I now want to make um, a third circle kind of uh, peering in I'm going to move this down to the bottom layer peering in from behind you can see we have transparency and the great thing about this is if you want to undo it you go to compound path release and we now have our shape ready to move again um, I should probably point out the pathfinder which is a more advanced version of what I've shown you you can add shapes together I'm going to show you this real quick I'm going to select all three of these and sometimes here we have add to shape area so we've now created a super shape out of three shapes I'm going to undo that I'll just change this to a different color to avoid confusion select all these again and you know we have subtract here so here we're at um, we're subtracting from this would depend on the order you selected them I went from here to here so I selected this first so I'm removing these from the first one and you know so on and so forth here we have um, intersect shapes which isn't going to work because of the order I've selected them in you know you get the idea so a uh, very useful pathfinder once again if you can't find it find it up in the menu okay I am uh, going to show you probably two more things if I can if I may before we uh, close this down I'm going to show you the benefit of having the appearance tab down here first of all um, I also have the transparency which I use a lot which allows you to um, drop the transparency of an object appearance this is why I wanted to show you something really really cool okay at the moment I have a stroke and it's dark blue and we're gonna make it pink and this is a very small stroke as you can see the stroke can be controlled from any one of uh, three menus I'm just gonna bring this up to 10 maybe 20 I wanna show you something now if I see if I can remember how to do this uh, dun 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 dun. clearly not there we go right so we have now dragged our stroke to the new uh, duplicate selected item and now once again we are looking top to bottom so if I change this stroke here to green you're probably thinking well you've just changed the stroke but if I actually scale this down you will see that I have actually a stroke upon a stroke now. Let's zoom in here. And so you can see the potential for this. We have made, so we have our fill here, which is uh, dark blue. And I could do this again. This is a technique I've used quite a few times, actually. I think I learned it in, I saw it in a tutorial somewhere anyway. And it's uh, one of the most useful ones I've things I've learned about Illustrator. Can you see now we have a stroke on a stroke on a stroke. So uh, also one cool thing you can do is if you want to change all the outlines to strokes if you go to uh, expand appearance and um, that has not worked. Expand, there we go, expand sorry. Fill and stroke, click OK and now each of these is going to be can you see I now have a stroke a kind of path for each of the uh, outlines which can be useful in itself because you can then apply a new stroke on top of them and so you'll have an incredibly complex shape there so that's a really cool thing and I'm going to do that for now and uh, let's have a look at one I made earlier this is just a fairly simple green on green and I've made one uh, blue on blue so uh, believe me it can be done my kind of heads a mess right now I've been at work all day um, right I think the last thing I want to show you is the aha the filters area now one thing that may be confusing we have filter and effects and you're thinking hmm you know one of them's not working this is 
Illustrator filters, Photoshop filters. And I think this is the key part. Photoshop filters will only work on raster images. Right now we have a shape in here, so it's a vector, and we can use the vector effects or any effects that is found in this library, which is white. Now if I bring back in my um, picture and go to filter sorry, go to filter um, Photoshop Ah, oh, sorry, I've got that the wrong way around. Yeah, uh, you can only use the effects menu. Sorry, in here, uh, the Photoshop, and then uh, go to I don't know, color half tone, I guess. And there we go. We apply that. If we select that, basically, once again, my head is gone blank. But you can only if you cannot apply um, an effect to a vector but you really want to apply an effect that's up here, select the shape in question let me change the color select the shape in question, go to object rasterize and uh, you can choose what resolution you want to do it at I'm going to select 72 and then this is now raster which means it's made up of little squares which means if I zoom in as you can see we now do not have the kind of infinite um, compatibility of uh, possibility of being able to zoom in infinitely. This is now a kind of solid made up of squares just like this and uh, that can be useful if you want to apply uh, raster effects. Sorry I've just uh, banged my mic there. So let's uh, call an end to this spectacular fail of the lesson. Uh, hopefully you learned a couple of things from it and um, hopefully Cinema 4D coming next. Um, we're waiting on getting 12 I might do it in 12, I might still be in 11.5 when I do it. Either way, it should be a good laugh, and I hope you join me. Thanks for watching, and good night.